hvad er det for en øh, app? Hello and welcome to what should have been a unicorn intro, uh, but that's going to be the only thing that's not going to go as planned today, uh, because this is a special episode of the unicorn. We are doing something completely uh, ridiculous and uh, streaming live uh, and now leading up to the uh, Umbrago launch. And the only thing that's not different is that, uh, as always in the unicorn, I'm lucky to have beautiful and intelligent people next to me uh, to, uh, to make up for, uh, for me being here. <laughs> and uh, my first guest uh, this morning is uh, our beloved CTO, Jacob. Thank you very much. And our even more beloved, or equally beloved, oh, okay. uh, <laughs> core uh, team lead, Klaus. Uh, and thank you for having us. Yes. Thank Thanks. you for being here. It's, uh, it's, it's V8 day. It is V8 day. Finally. How crazy is that? Yes, it feels crazy. Yep. Um, so, uh, so in an hour ish, you'll uh, push the button, and uh, and V8 is going to be available for everyone. Yep. Uh, but uh, it's almost less than a year ago that eight actually wasn't defined as a project. Could you? Uh, I mean, you joined the company. Yes. Uh, a little over a year ago, and uh, maybe just you know a little bit about the process. Yeah, absolutely. So as you said. When I joined, uh, V8 has already been talked about for quite some time. A lot of stuff has happened, uh, but also uh, here at HQ we were mainly developing on on, uh, on seven features and, and new minor versions for seven. Um, so there was a lot of work in the beginning for us to figure out what's actually going to be part of the final uh, V8. What what technical improvements are we going to uh, include? Which features are we going to refine and, and include in the late, in the in the last version? So there's a lot of work, and, and Klaus and I also spent a lot of time in the beginning uh, trying to hash out these these uh, these things, and then slowly we started adopting this V8 project more and more internally, and switched our focus to building primarily, and I would say at least for probably the last half year, it's been it's been only uh, V8 related uh, development that we've been doing. So it's been it's been an exciting journey for something that we we've talked a lot about, but was very. Uh, in concrete to something that we're now delivering here uh, about a year after. Um, so, so very exciting for us as a team and, and very exciting journey for me personally to be, be part of. That's been a, it's been a big experience for me. I, c I, could, I could only imagine. <laughs> and thank you for, for, for joining. I, I don't, I'm not sure there would have been an eight, uh, at least not uh, at this time, if it wasn't for you. Uh, so massive high five for that. Klaus. Yep. Uh, you then had the pleasure of, uh, of uh, actually making uh, this being something that's executed. Yeah, I do. Uh, it's been a, a long process and uh, it's been really hard uh, working with Jacob uh, on defining, <laughs> <laughs> not the working with Jacob part, but uh, defining when we should actually switch our focus from doing V7, which is a really popular product being used by the entire community, to actually focusing more on V8. Um, we don't really want to, to leave people behind, but we also don't want to keep V8 from happening. Uh, so it's, it's been really hard actually figuring out when we made that switch on, on our focus. I think that's probably been the hardest part of the process, mm. um, because really we, we, we can't leave people behind. We have, we have a lot of bugs in V7 that needed to be fixed, but we also just wanted to see some progress on V8. And with the sort of limited amount of resources we have on the core team, we really have to prioritize what we're working on. Yeah, and at the same time, I guess what also happened in the process was that the entire uh, focus on getting the community back into the uh, project actually succeeded, yeah, which was, was a one of your another of your tasks. Yeah, those two doesn't really uh, go uh, well along because they they battle for the same uh, for the same hands. But but it's been an interesting challenge for us to both increase uh, our efforts in our collaboration with the community, which has seen tremendous uh, increase in. Um, in just the number of PRs that we're receiving, 
uh, and then building a new major at the same time, <coughs> and also figuring out how do we how do we keep this momentum going as we switch from one major to another? Because obviously this is something that we really want to preserve as we go uh, forward with Umbraco 8. So yeah, that's been it's been an interesting uh, challenge, um, but a fun one as well. I would say it's been it's been lovely to see all these people engaging with us and and wanting to build great products together with us. So. Yeah. Yeah, also, also that. because all pull requests are being reviewed uh, by by us. We, uh, we got a new entire process for the whole pull request thing, and it's been really good for us uh, to actually follow that process um, in regards to just having things happen by random. Uh, now we actually follow up on the pull requests, make sure they get merged in, which means that we can also have some progress on our existing V7 project, uh, even though we are primarily and the core team working at at, at V8 releases. Um, it's been really good and it, the community has been a huge help to us uh, lately, both on V7 and V8. Um, but it, it's, it's really the community allowing us to, to primarily focus on V8. Yeah, also because of the uh, 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 pull request team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, They're doing been, a great job at actually a, managing yeah, these things. Yeah. So um, now that 8 is going to be released in, in 55 minutes, yep. uh, no pressure, yep. um, <laughs> Where does that leave us in terms of, uh, uh, of, of getting help from the community? Right now, a lot of the pull requests are primarily V7 focused, even though we're starting to see 8 focused as yeah. well. We're starting to see a lot of V8 focused. Actually, we've been seeing those for quite a while up to the, this release. And that has also been a huge help. Um, but we switched the main branch on our development uh, repository, which means that we want people to focus on doing pull requests targeted to V8 from, from now on. Of course, things can be backported to V7, but our main focus will be on actually pulling things into V8, moving ahead. And uh, now I'm uh, now I'm a real jerk because I haven't prepped you with this question. But <laughs> but what's the uh, what's the best way the community can help with uh, with V8, uh, in your opinion? I think a lot of it has to do with some of the main functionality that we've been highlighting, um, because they they are all centered around. Uh, bringing more focus to content and also helping bring in more focus to the editor experience. And I think at least there's new opportunity here to see how can we evolve uh, the CMS from here with this new focus. How can, we, how can we bring new thoughts to the table on how we can expand and be creative in new ways uh, to expand um, the focus on contents and, and making it more about creating great content and, and great results with Umbraco. Uh, also from a tooling perspective, so those doing uh, third-party extensions and, and, and stuff like that. I'm really excited to see what will they make of, of these changes to the platform that we've been trying to, to create uh, like a baseline for, for setting off on, on this content focus, trying to increase that. So I think that that's going to be one way. And other than that, I think we're going to just keep building on the momentum that we have. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are engaging very much and, and, and want to help out and have, have good feedback to us on the process and good input on what can be done with the with the with the project itself um, and then then just keep going from there uh, there's lots of lots of stuff ahead of us i think the, the most important part is actually using the product actually adapting to to use the product um, the only way that we can get feedback that we can improve on is if people actually use the product so yeah. st get started as soon as you can i think that's the most important thing for yeah. us yeah. and then if i want to contribute is it, uh, is it, would you say it's uh, easier or harder uh, to contribute to aid? You know, we have this mission of making things simpler and I'm not really, really trying to yeah. put uh, words, <laughs> words into your mouth right now. One of our main, main focuses for V8 has been to improve the code base, uh, clean it up. Um, there's a lot of old legacy stuff in the V7 code base and it could get a little bit disturbing to try to figure out how to actually do things and if I wanted to do a fix, where was where am I supposed to do it, and how am I supposed to do it? A lot of these things have been cleaned up, so there's uh, there's really no excuse for you. Um, you you should only have one place to fix things, uh, and there should be a fa fairly similar way of fixing things. Uh, in in if you look at how other things are done in the code base, um, we're trying to get rid of all the uh, weird quirks that we had in V7. Uh, so for you, as a contributor, it, it, it has become a lot easier to, to figure out where to fix things and how to fix them. Uh, at least that's our goal. Sweet. So, mm -hmm. so in percentage, how much of Umbrao is now nils code free? <laughs> <laughs> I think we are reaching a somewhere like above 90 percent. That's fantastic. Nils free. That's fantastic. Let's get to 100 <laughs> at, uh, at some point. Um, 
So uh, eight, we've been talking quite a lot about eight uh, over the last couple of months, and we've been highlighting, you know, some features. But but if uh, if you're not allowed to say uh, focus on like the three main features yeah. uh, that we've been highlighting, and and uh, we're going to talk about that all morning. So now that I have you, what would you highlight as something special around eight? Mm. Uh, for me, the content part that I already talked about in, in trying to switch that focus, which of course is related to some of the functionality we did, but but other than that, some, something I want to highlight is just uh, the fact that it's now out there because it's been talked about for five years and I, and I think we shouldn't underestimate that now we have a new platform for Umbraco to, to build on and to talk about and, and to develop from and I think that that's going to give us all a new opportunity to put fresh perspective on, on what's going to happen next and also um, I think it's important to also realize that the amount of people here at HQ, though we're still a relatively small team to the size of the project, we, we are quite a few more people than we used to be. So I think you will see that uh, while this was maybe the first major in, in about five years, it's not going to be uh, the only major uh, in the next five years. Uh, so we, we're going to be able to move faster and you can see that already from our engagement with the community and, and, and that's just the beginning of it. So I'm, I'm most excited about the fact that it's happening really. Yep. And that we we are we are setting off for new starts on on a new uh, major for the for the platform and and then all the stuff that we already have going uh, from there. I think that that's very very exciting uh, times to be part of uh, on Braco. Yep. And and uh, speaking of uh, amount of people, we are we are factor five uh, since we start talking yep. about uh, about yep. it. So it's amazing. And, and you, Klaus. Uh, what, what is uh, what is the secret thing of V8 that's awesome that uh, that I, I don't know about? Well, it's it's not that secret, but one thing that I think is the most interesting thing about V8 is the fact that we did that massive cleanup. Um, I mean, I'm a I'm a coder, I'm a geek. <laughs> I really love that we have cleaner code now than we did before, um, and I love that we have updated many of our dependencies uh, to something new which means that I can actually, as a developer, use newer features in our frameworks that we are using. Uh, I think that's pretty awesome. Um, not being limited to using old versions of whatever framework we pulled in, uh, just because it was never updated. I think things like these are pretty cool. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, I, t I totally agree. So, uh, well, launch is in, in, in 49 minutes. What yes. are you going to do the rest of the day? Uh, we're going to watch the counter for uh, adoption, <laughs> how many downloads we get. We're going to watch the counters on uh, Umbraco Clouds, keeping an eye on new projects being created. So I know there's a few that's been stating that they are waiting for the 8 release before they start new projects and want to try it out. So, so hopefully we'll get a lot of feedback already today and see people engage with the platform. And then of course we're going to keep our eyes on if everything goes smoothly or if there's some things where we need to uh, just uh, respond a bit faster than, than normal. Yeah. I think it's, it's mainly that we don't have any plans because we don't want to be yeah. caught on, on the <laughs> wrong foot. <laughs> uh, so we want to be prepared yeah. for whatever comes. Um, yeah. Yeah, and uh, then uh, Klaus, you came to me yesterday with uh, with with something pretty exciting um, because you know everybody's talking about is is eight uh, ready and uh, will it even work on cloud, etc. But uh, but then yesterday uh, you came and you showed me this. It's uh, it's our old bookkeeper's uh, uh, husband's website. He imports wine. Yes. Uh, I was like, this looked like this looked like his site. What's so special about this? Well, the only thing special about it is that it's actually running on cloud on V8. Uh, and the fun fact is that this site was actually the first site. Fairly sure it's the first site that was ever running on the first version of cloud, and uh, version something old of Umbraco. Uh, but now it's actually the first site on V8 on cloud. And uh, how how did you do that? Because it's no secret that uh, we're launching a major, mm -hmm. and and you're not. It's it's possible uh, to upgrade, but it's not an out of the box uh, process. We actually talk about migrating mm. sites more than than upgrading. But in this case, it's a it's a relatively simple site, yeah. right? Like a uh, hundred pages or something like yeah. that. It's it's a really low amount of pages. So actually, instead of trying to actually upgrade it, I simply decided to create a new V8 project and manually import the content into it. Um, for smaller sites, this seems like a pretty decent approach because you also get to get a clean slate when doing a development for a new site. Um, changes I had to do was mainly template changes. Um, this site was so old that it was using a dynamic 
stuff, uh, and so most of that stuff is, is not really available in, in V8, so I had to rewrite many of the templates. Uh, it was a fairly simple task, uh, just changing a syntax and changing some inherits and stuff like that in the templates, but it was really, really simple. Um, and everything just worked out of the box, which was pretty cool. Um, I just copied over my document types to the new site and basically set up the same structure as, as I had in the old one. Um, what we will be doing at some point is that we plan on helping people migrate content, because if you have a large amount of content, this is not really a good approach. Um, we're not really sure about when we are going to be done with that part, um, but the idea is that you will be able to migrate your content and get a new site and basically have to just recreate, well, just recreate your templates uh, for V8. Um, but based on the fact that you have your content available and we have migrated all the content, it should be a, a fairly doable task to actually upgrade your stuff to work on V8. Uh, and I think that's uh, super interesting because uh, how, how much time did you spend on this project? Uh, well, two hours probably. Which is interesting, right? Because because uh, even though it's a simple simple site, mm -hmm. I think uh, to me it was super inspiring because we've all heard this idea that you have to rewrite your templates, but the, I guess the truth is you have to you know update uh, your own Braco uh, syntax and your Razor template. Yeah. It's it's really as simple as I, I think it's it's a couple of syntax uh, changes that that changes from like get property value to value instead. Uh, and if you're using models builder for your site, many of these things will not even be needed. Uh, the only fact that had uh, to do with the fact that I had to update this is because it was using the old uh, dynamic syntax and that simply wasn't available. Um, so yeah, if I had been using models builder for this site, if models builder actually existed when this site was created, <laughs> um, I would have a lot less to actually do for upgrading it. But uh, I think it's uh, I think it's amazing. I think. Uh, uh, more people should do like you because maybe this idea of eight seems like an overwhelming thing, but there's actually quite good documentation already yep. on mm -hmm. our, um, and uh, and you showed that you can actually you know port a relatively simple site to eight in 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 two hours. Yeah, and it was also using forms. I think that's what took up most of my time actually. Um, but so so so. My takeaway from from this session, apart from eight, is uh, it's here in. Yeah. a little while and you're totally on top of things and, and you've been amazing, is that you can actually upgrade a simple uh, or port a simple V7 side to 8 in, in a couple of hours. Mm, yeah. And I think people should, should try to do that. Um, uh, so thank you so much and thank you for all your work. Uh, you. We're going to have a small switch now. There are going to be some other people here. And to, uh, to sort of buy time, I'm trying to uh, to put on a, uh, a video that highlights some of the uh, uh, V8 features. It's done by our Braco TV team. And maybe the sound doesn't work. So if that doesn't work, you can go to, uh, to our YouTube channel and see the video there while, uh, while you wait. And then uh, I'll have new guests in five minutes. Cool. Congrats and Godspeed. Thanks. Same to you. Thank you for having us.
just click on the um, one of the uh, information level or warning level then if you click for instance on this one we get a bunch of more uh, information regarding the properties timestamp the process id the process name etc a part of that you can perform much more complex search queries to help you to find the log entries that you are interested in your umbraco site for example if you go to um, the number of errors that we have so if you click on two then in here we have a couple of uh, search examples by default is it is has the exception so we can see the two errors that we have right now in our logs but for instance from here if you click on the small arrow we get the drop down and we can we can select uh, through different um, search examples you can also build your own and if you want to find more about um, the log viewer there is a link in the description of this video Thank you so much for watching and until next time, a big high five you rock. And high five you rock to uh, not only Gabriel, but also three new guests. Uh, actually, we now have so many guests that uh, we don't have in enough mics, um, <laughs> but uh, we'll make up for it. It is, as I said, uh, my job today is to make sure that things go wrong here. So they don't go wrong in uh, in the launch, which I'm not involved in. Uh, so uh, so I'm sure that's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. But uh, the reason I invited you, uh, Klaus, our design guard, uh, Martin, our marketing guard, and Morten, our major guard of uh, umbrago.com, <laughs> is uh, is of course. So now I'm in heaven, and uh, I'm in heaven not because uh, because uh, we we are not only launching. Uh, in a Umbrago 8 today. We're also launching something else. And maybe you could talk a little bit about that mm -hmm. and what that is. We can. I think, uh, wouldn't it make sense if uh, we start, Klaus? Yeah, we're rolling out a new identity today and we're very excited about it. Um, new uh, Umbrago identity. It's like a revamp, refresh of the identity. And um, uh, we're very excited about uh, it's not looking like a telco anymore. Yes. That was sort of like. <laughs> The brief I got <laughs> when I first started here, so I think we we kind of come a long way, and uh, I think uh, with this we are even more connected to what we are in the company and how we are supposed to be in the future, and also more connected to the community. Um, that was sort of like the main idea of also doing this and doing this moving forward. So it's this is a first step of something that's gonna make a lot of changes that is uh, that we're very excited about so uh, yeah it's uh, it's super cool yeah. um and uh rolling out a new identity that affects a lot of people uh it it also affected you uh martin yes. because uh because there was a uh, sort of like a, a project that landed on your desk all of a sudden oh yes um yeah it was uh, with with uh, a bit of uh, a short notice but uh <laughs> but that's how we like it here in Umbraco, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> that was of course perfectly fine. And um, what we did was um, we basically decided on, on rolling out a, a version 1, much like much else we do. And, uh, and now we finally have the new identity on the site and I think it looks great. It's uh, much like you said, it's not looking like a telco. I think it's looking a lot more like the company we would like to be. Let me put it on. Yes, please. Uh, uh, look how pretty it is. Look at look at this animation. Look look how yes. it uh, illustrates how the 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 company Umbrago, the project, the community, and everything if you comes click, to the. Click to another page and then back, and then oh, yeah. the animation. Perfect. Yes. I'll do that. <laughs> look at this. Yes, it's beautiful. And it's even so beautiful that it doesn't repeat itself annoyingly when you yeah. refresh the page. <laughs> yes, yes, we don't want to make another million dollar website. We are trying to make something that, that looks very nice and is calm and, and uh, guides the users and uh, that reflects who we are as a company. And uh, as you saw when you clicked onto one of the sub pages, we are not done rolling out the new identity, but this is a great first step and um, I'm super excited about it. That, that we are doing this, that once we have something ready, we launch it, we have something of value that I think is improving our site immensely. So we put it out there instead of waiting until we are done. Because when are you ever done with an identity or mm. SDMS or a website? So um, I'm really excited about this. Yep. 
So uh, maybe uh, I can move over to uh, yes. to Morten because uh, these things doesn't happen on their own. Uh, someone needs to, to do something <laughs> and uh, that became your task. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, so some people actually know that I used to work in support. Um, but you know, I'm, I need to try something else. And now I, I mean, I did study web development, so and we needed an internal guy to handle .com, so it was a perfect match. And then I'm so lucky that I have Klaus sitting almost right next to me uh, because design is not my my strong suit. So um, yeah, I'm very happy. Uh, <laughs> mostly because sometimes you know I make something and then Klaus looks and it's like one pixel too narrow, and then you have to. Uh, I mean. He's very, he's very talented. So, and then of course I have Martin. Uh, so if there's something I'm, I don't know if I'm in doubt of, of how to approach something, I just ask him. So we, we make quite a good team. So uh, the the site uh, went uh, live this morning. Yeah. Uh, and it seemed like a quite yeah. smooth process. Uh, uh, yes. And I guess you've been dog fooding, right? Because you've been using uh, a cloud for this. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it it took a few minutes. You know, you just have to deploy from staging to live and then deploy your content afterwards and then everything works. Um, so so you've actually been working on the new site while in another environment while uh, Martin and, and Christina and Vera, our content editors, have been working on uh, yes. on the content side of things. Yes. Yeah, that, that's what's so nice about all these environments. So I can, you know, do whatever I want on development and staging and, and make sure everything works there and just, then just deploy it and overwrite whatever exists uh, already. Sweet. Uh, I love that we uh, we take, we drink our own champagne as I learned it. It's, <laughs> it's called rather than eating dog food. Yes. Um, so what to expect now? Now, uh, uh, like a V1 of the uh, new identity on the website is, is live. Mm. What's, what's going to happen? I guess I can take the mic for that. Yeah. Um, so let me just mount it here. You see, one, we spent money as if it was our own exactly, poll. Yes. <laughs> so we only have three mics. The friendly cashier is very happy and friendly today. Yes, more, uh, more money to work on, on our products. Exactly. Uh, what's up next is that, of course, we'll be moving to V8 on .com, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, so that's uh, one of Morten's uh, next uh, uh, tasks. We just heard from Klaus, it takes about two hours. So I'm guessing <laughs> sometime this afternoon we are there. And uh, then, of course, we'll be rolling out the identity across uh, the site and across all platforms. Yes. Um, we are already there on, uh, or, or we are already started on .com. We are already started on our as well. So if you visit our, you'll see that uh, the. I I don't know if anyone had a very close relation to the green color on our, but uh, the green color has now been replaced with the uh, with the blue from our new identity. Oh. And I think it looks uh, super nice. It's um, and and like that, all our platforms will gradually have uh, the identity rolled out yes. once it's ready. And look, it's the community heart. It is. It is. I it love is. that one. Yeah, we did that yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> well, not the heart. No, I mean, the, heart, the heart has been following us like from Coke Garden also and being a, a huge part of the Umbrella identity as well. So we took the heart. In mm. uh, to Umbrago, and we're also using that uh, again this year at Co Garden, and also as a part of Umbrago, and we're gonna have some new awesome swag and uh, yeah. trying to also mix the two of our own brand and also what Co Garden was like uh, last year. So that's also gonna be rolled out, and uh, a lot of other changes that come, mm. and uh, product showing the product even more. And I love that about the new identity, right? That it, it's actually a result of, of uh, coming from our roots, mm -hmm. which is uh, the community. And, and if there's something that represents our community, it's what's happening at Coke Garden. By the way, if you haven't bought a ticket, go to cokegarden19.com yes. and buy a ticket now. That was you a visit from our sponsors. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, uh, it, it, it kind of started there and then we actually realized that that worked so well, that represented us, us so well. And then yeah. we've been spending, I guess, the last nine months trying to use it and expand on, on those ideas. Yeah, yeah. Mm. we already had it like launched internally like a couple of months ago. So like we gradually, the people are here in the company, uh, they're enjoying working with it. And it's really nice to see that people actually enjoy and see it move forward and people are asking me all the time can I get this can I get that 
So it's like it's a it's a it's a super nice to work with that people also enjoy working with it. So mm. and what we should say uh, more is like a huge shout out to the rest of the Coma team because that's also a, a big part of doing an identity is also all the copy that they're doing, mm. all the the writing that they're doing on and all the friendly openness that we have in in our brand as a whole is something that we're trying to like combine with the, the visual side of the company. And, and speaking of, uh, of of the purpose of uh, great communication, we're launching eight today as well. Yes. Uh, so you get 10 minutes of limelight. That's that's yeah. It sucks to be in marketing uh, <laughs> on a on a on a product day. But you've been doing an awesome job on the new website uh, because I guess people have lots of questions about aid. Some people are panicking about mm. aid, and uh, and what should they do then? Uh, they can go to the website and then go to Ombrago. Is it dash or slash aid? No, Ombrago dash aid. Right? Yeah, dash aid. I think uh, Ombrago dot com uh, slash Ombrago dash aid, and there there is a landing page. We'll of course share it on all our media uh, throughout the day. It's already been shared, I'm sure. Um, and there you find the most, uh, uh, the, the high level info about uh, Ombrago 8. So there you have it, yeah. And you can see the, the major features of Ombrago 8. And also we've been working on, uh, and, and I'm saying we, as if I have been working on that, but uh, the, the docs team has been working on getting the docs uh, up to date, much like what we're doing on .com. Uh, docs is constantly being updated, but there's uh, an overview of which articles are ready and, and what you can already read about uh, V8 and what will be coming next. So you can actually see what they're working on now. Uh, that's also part of the launch and the communication. We want to make sure that people, they feel safe about V8 and they know what to do with it once they get it in their hands. Obviously, we will open for uh, uh, V8 trials mm -hmm. soon. So uh, once you have a trial and you have some documentation and you have the basic information, you can actually start getting your hands dirty and start playing around with V8. And that's super important to us. Um, and, so and then as a final thing, just to mention that, we are also, of course, mentioning, or we are also releasing a, a constantly updated, uh, frequently asked questions. So when we get questions uh, to our support, we will, um, if we, get the same questions again and again, we will update the FAQ with the answer to those. And we'll of course be broadcasting the info to that as well. Cool, so uh, if I don't see my question in the FAQ, I could just answer or ask multiple times. <laughs> yes, exactly. <That's>, uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so before uh, before we end, um, what are you most excited about, about uh, what's happening today? I think it's actually the the way that we are releasing this, that we are getting all the stuff that we've been working on for, for the last, well, weeks, months, out in the wild, and now we are actually going to see it in, in action. That's uh, what I'm super excited about. And then, um, yeah, working on with it from here and improving on it. And Klaus? Same. <laughs> <laughs> super excited about getting the identity out and also uh, working, uh, let's see people use it and enjoy it and uh, and working together with people moving forward with, with this identity, something that I'm looking very much forward to. And uh, I think uh, V8 is great. Uh, it's um, We've been working also with uh, Nils from the dev team and also like the skinning the, the back end. I think if, if you three things, colors, colors, colors. So I, 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 love, I love the colors of the new uh, uh, product, so uh, I'm excited. Yeah, it's it's so friendly now. Um, I also love uh, love the the colors, the brave colors <laughs> in yeah. the in the user interface. Um, it's uh, it's it, it's really stunning. Yeah. yeah. And Morten? Yeah, uh, I think I'm most excited about how you know easy people can start it with V8 because once it's released, you can just go on to umbrow.com and then create a uh, a cloud file and then play around with it and then of course we can we can get some feedback and, and see what people like about it. So if I actually want to try Umbrago 8 in 27-ish minutes, <laughs> um, then, then I can just uh, go to umbrago.com and and when I take a trial of Umbrago Cloud, that's going to be 8? Yeah, as, as soon as you know as it has been released and everything is, is working on cloud, then the uh, .com trial flow will uh, use V8. 
Oh, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much and congrats on the identity and the website launch. I'm super <laughs> impressed you. how smooth uh, it all went. And now there's going to be an awkward break while I try to uh, put iron on yet another silent video. Uh, <laughs> but uh, thank you for, uh, for uh, staying with us and uh, we'll be back in, in a couple of minutes. Thank you. This is the second video regarding what's new in Umbraco 8. If you missed the first part, there is a link in the description of this video. My name is Gabriel and I will be your Umbraco Unicorn guide today. Let's get started. I'm in the back office of my Umbraco 8 website and today I would like to show you two more new features in Umbraco 8. The first one is the search bar. Searching your back office has been made even easier. We just need to press Ctrl plus space which opens a search field overlay. Now, all of the search results will appear as we start typing. For instance, if I go with home, then I get, um, I get the results for my document type, content node, and also the template. If we go, for, for example, for media, we search for media, then we get the data types as uh, results. Awesome. Now the second thing that I would like to show you is the log viewer interface. We can find it we can find it in the settings section. So if you go in the settings, then we have the log viewer right here. The log viewer feature allows you to filter and view log entries. For instance, if we want to see all of the logs that we have, we click on this one and then we get all of them right here. Also, if you just click on the um, one of the uh, information level or warning level, then if you click, for instance, on this one, we get a bunch of more uh, information regarding the properties. Timestamp, the process ID, the process name, etc. A part of that, you can perform much more complex search queries to help you to find the log entries that you are interested in your Umbraco site. For example, if you go to um, the number of errors that we have, so if you click on two, then in here we have a couple of uh, search examples. By default, it, is, it is, has the exception, so we can see the two errors that we have right now in our logs. But for instance, from here, if you click on the small arrow, we get the drop down, and we can we can select uh, through different um, search examples. You can also build your own. And if you want to find more about um, the log viewer, there is a link in the description of this video. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, a big high five, you rock. Do you know what country the Panama Canal is in? Kayla. South America. South America. Florida. Pakistan. It's Panama, isn't it? Panama. It's not Panama. Is it? it starts with the P, doesn't it? Well, why would it be in Panama? That'd be weird. How many stars are on the United States flag? Fifth. Whoops. Sorry about that. I actually. <laughs> Uh, it's uh, it's delayed what we're seeing at the at the HQ, and I actually think uh, we put on a a old uh, the same video as uh, as before. So we're just gonna roll the uh, language variant uh, video now. In the next couple of minutes, we'll have a look at one of the main features in Umbraco 8 called language variants. The feature allows you to vary content by culture, so you can allow a content node to exist in several languages. I'm Gabriel, and I will be your unicorn guide throughout this video. Let's get started. I'm in the back office of my Umbraco 8 installation, where I have only one content node that has a couple of properties. The very first thing to ensure when you want to work with language variants is to have more than one language enabled on the website. This is done quite easily from the settings section. So we head over to the settings section and then we choose languages. As we can see, we only have one language, the one uh, that's, uh, that comes by default, the English one. And in order to create a new language, we just click the, uh, the small um, green button, add language. Perfect. Then let's choose the one that we, um, we want to configure. It will be the Danish one. And that was a sneak peek of the fantastic uh, how to work with language variants um, uh, from Umbrago TV. 
uh, you can go to our YouTube channel and uh, see the rest or see it on, uh, on YouTube. And uh, while we've had some hiccups, including some random uh, YouTube Play Next uh, videos, uh, uh, I'm uh, now being joined by three new gentlemen. Um, it's uh, Martin, Christian and Kenneth, all working on uh, the cloud team. Yeah. And I thought, uh, well, some people might thought, uh, thought we only released Umbrago 8 today. Uh, then people realized we also uh, released um, a new identity and a new website. But there's actually more because uh, when there's a new version of Umbrago coming, uh, especially a new major, it has some side effects. And some of those side effects you've been, uh, you've been experiencing because you're yes. on the Umbrago team. And I guess it's unfair to call it side effects because uh, we, we all knew about it, but you've been working on getting cloud ready for it. Yes. Uh, one of the things we've been working on has been uh, deploy, uh, updating that to support version eight. Um, it has mainly been, uh, been a cloud effort, uh, but also with a lot of support from the core team. So it's been a lot of joint effort. Um, uh, we, there was some initial uh, uh, um, things about how we need to so support variants um, and, um, and we've been, we've been thro through the whole, the whole mill, mm. but I think Martin and Christian can tell you a bit more about yeah, cause the whole experience. Because it's true that, right, that uh, I just heard uh, Morten uh, from, from the Kuma team uh, who've been working on the new .com say, what are you most excited about? And he said that uh, in a couple of minutes, I can just go to umbrow.com, take a trial, and then it's going to be uh, V8. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's your work. Well, that has been an amazing journey uh, for just a shot of four months, I guess. We uh, we uh, took on the deploy task from V7 and had to transform it into V8. And uh, it was like uh, jumping on a speeding train. Because mm -hmm. even though that V8 was uh, moving fast on the inside, we had to both transform the old code from deploy and also just um, work with the code base just to move it into the new one, also keeping updating all the changes that continuously went on. So it's been a really amazing journey. So I guess deploy must be the first big package um, that works uh, with V8. Yeah, you could say that. That and the, and the starter kit as well. Oh, and forms. forms and forms, forms of course, yes. Forms. So, uh, so eight is uh, it's going to be out in uh, in nineteen minutes. I guess you're pretty excited about it as well because yes, uh, that uh, even though we've been doing loads of testing on on your work, both yeah. on the cloud integration but also on the deploy part, it's it's in twenty minutes that you know other people are going to get their hands dirty. What are you most excited about? Uh, maybe you can pass the mic to Christian. Yeah. You're going to be in stereo now, oh, yeah. Christian. Okay, thanks. <laughs> uh, all right. What am I most excited about? Well, for V8, it's probably the uh, the color scheme. I mean, you somehow managed to hit my favorite color. So, uh, really cool. Uh, and all I'm for you, Christian. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. <laughs> And uh, I'm really excited to test, uh, to see our solutions work in real life because as we know, Umbaco is very flexible and sometimes we can take into account the flexibility that our users do. So it's going to be exciting to see how, how strong and how solid we build uh, the solutions uh, working around V8 on the cloud. And uh, it's going to be a couple of exciting weeks. I think to see the results and see the the the, the usage and and see if, if we did our job good enough and otherwise how well we can uh, we can support the, uh, the 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 things the users do. So what has been uh, what has been the hardest uh, part in in you the two of you have especially been working on deploy right? Yeah. Uh, so what has been the hardest part when it comes to Porting a package from seven to eight. Oh, and oh sure. the, the most exciting part, not the hardest. <laughs> you are asking so many questions. For me, uh, I never worked with Umbraco before I started here like five months ago. So for me, it was, uh, one thing is to get into the uh, feelings of how Umbraco works, but also uh, 
uh, moving along with the uh, with the core team into what V8 has become. So one part is just learning something completely new about this amazing product. And the next thing is also how uh, to to integrate that with the new stuff that is coming in, which has been all for the better. And you actually managed to uh, to get it working. Uh, uh, earlier in this uh, cast, I, uh, I uh, talked with Klaus about uh, him porting this site uh, uh, to V8. And then I said, oh, I would love to, uh, to have tried that. And then he uh, said, uh, let me just check. Uh, and, and the customer was okay. Uh, then he could uh, create, use that site as a baseline, the feature on cloud that allows you to create a new project based on an existing one. Uh, and in a couple of minutes, I had a completely working version of that site, which is a lot of the magic that you've been working on, right? Because that is cloud and that is deploy and I could even clone it down locally and I could just start working with it. It was a, a super nice uh, experience. And by the way, I then in, in 15 minutes turned it into a multilingual site and I redeployed it uh, back. So nice. well done. Thanks. Thank you. And, and in terms of, uh, of, uh, of, of feature sets of, uh, of 8, does uh, everything in 8 now just work? Uh, like variants and, and everything? Yes, with Deploy it does. That's so sweet. Uh, so what, uh, how should people uh, stress test the things we've, we've been doing? What are you, what are you most uh, nervous about uh, that, uh, that people are gonna kind of poke well, around with. We, that's, that's the funny part and that's what I talked about before. We don't know. <laughs> so that's what I'm most nervous about. Stuff I don't know. We don't know what we don't know. And that's what I'm probably most nervous about. We've stress test. The last week we've tested, we have had help from everyone in Umbaco SWAT to do tests as well and test deploy and test the cloud. In general, we've made baselines, we've made uh, multi-environmental site with many languages and cloned it down and created a lot of different document types and we've, we've, we've tried to be as thorough as we could and really try and put pressure on wherever we could and uh, so f uh, I mean it seems to be working <laughs> so that but I'll say that the test we've done the last couple of weeks have been very very good we found some some bugs and some issues that we had time to fix, so that has been really nice that we that we had the time to to test it. And I guess that's uh, where uh, all all of these new processes that sometimes we can curse about them, uh, but this is also where you know they deliver. Um, when uh, we launched, I think the worst launch we've ever done uh, was uh, the beta of uh, version three, which uh, was distributed on CDs at, uh, <laughs> at Code Garden in London, because back then uh, their Wi-Fi was so shaky uh, that we had to burn CDs. Uh, and we literally made the last uh, commit like an hour before the conference started. Uh, and then we just had help from, from the people coming early to burn CDs that we could distri <laughs> distribute. This is definitely another process. Yeah, um, yeah. So moving forward, and maybe you could uh, elaborate a, b a bit on that, uh, Kenneth. Uh, what's going to happen now? Uh, what are you going to do the rest of the day? What, uh, what, uh, what, uh, what's going to happen the next yeah, couple of weeks? Uh, we, today we will, be, uh, we will be closely monitoring the cloud. Um, we, will, uh, we, will just, we will be available for looking into every issue that we get so we can because we have this as you do with all launches we have a queasy feeling on our stomach and you know we're all psyched and and this is based on on us just wanting to do the very best we can and that's what we're going to do all day uh in in the next couple of weeks and then we're going to start slowly on on new projects and bring the cloud to a better place sweet and by now uh, and also ask some of the other people uh, who, who came by this morning. By now, most people know about the three major features of eight, right? The infinite editing, content apps, and uh, uh, variants. But if you should mention like a hidden feature or thing in eight that people uh, didn't realize, what would you uh, what would you highlight? New cache. That is my favorite thing. And what is new cool. cache? New cache is the is the new in-memory cache of V8. It's, so it's no longer based off of an XML document located in in the file system. Well, that's loaded up on startup, but it's it's all in memory and it's 
it's awesome and it's fast. I heard it's twice as fast. Yeah, ex exactly. Out That's what box. I heard as well. Um, and for us on the cloud, that actually that means a lot because that means we can support more visitors on the same infrastructure, which, no, that's which is cool. awesome. That's a good point. And Martin, you? I know it's a little hidden gem, but I uh, really fell in love with this uh, search feature. Ooh. It's yes. really amazing. So just like if you have a Macintosh and you go control space, you will get this uh, search bar, which can just search the whole uh, content reads and document types. It's amazing. Yeah, and is, the, is it true that it's made uh, so people have the same experience they're used to on a PC? So on Mac, it just works. Uh, it pops up beautifully in the middle of the screen, and as you type, you'll get search results instantly. Whereas if you're on a PC in Umbrago 8, you have to click the search field, and you will have to wait a little bit, and then you search, <laughs> and, and, and random things will, will start appearing, or is it going to be the same experience? I mean, hopefully it's going to be the same experience. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was just joking. Huh? But it's true, it's a, it's a very, very cool feature. Uh, and Christian? Um, well, this is probably more code-related, because... Excuse me. As we uh, as we had to integrate V8 into deploy uh, over V7, we uh, we did a lot of code changes uh, based on the fact that V7, the V8 code was very different. But they introduced uh, dependency injection in V8. That really, when we first got to work with it into in deploy, it really really helped uh, making deploy uh, easier code to read and easier to use the core uh, services exposed uh, to us. So. For me, that was uh, really nice once we just figured it out how it worked. Cool. So, lots of things uh, to uh, look forward to. Uh, also for uh, for developers and uh, super admins. Yeah. And if I want to test trial Umbrago 8 in 10 minutes, yeah. what should I do? You should go to the front page to the uh, sorry to umbrago.com, of course. And I probably need a mic. Uh, you should go to umbrago.com and fill out the trial site. There's a form, form on, uh, on the front page and everything will work as it used to. Fantastic. And then I'm up yeah. on, uh, on yeah, Umbrago. Yeah, you will be presented with a brand new and shining V8 site. That's amazing. Minutes. Amazing job. I know you've all been working so hard the last couple of months, so thank you so much. <laughs> you. Uh, and hopefully uh, we'll all get some sleep uh, soon as well. Oh yeah, we're looking oh. forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> now I uh, look forward to, to launch. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Uh, thank we're going to have yet another short, awkward break. And if we are lucky, we're also uh, going to have some random related YouTube video playing automatically. Until then, um, uh, we're just going to hear a little bit more from Gabriel about what's uh, new in Umbrago 8. My name is Gabriel and I will be your Umbrago Unicorn guide today. Let's get started. I'm in the back office of my Umbrago 8 installation and if we have to compare with Umbrago 7, the very first thing that we'll notice is the refreshed user interface. First of all, all of the sections have been moved to the top of the page instead of the left side of the page as it was in um, Umbraco 7. This new look gives a bigger workplace since we only have the tree and the dashboard. Then we can make one view bigger than another one. If we have a closer look at the sections, we won't be able to find the developer section anymore. It has been merged with the settings section. So if you are wondering where the hull check or model builder tabs are, nothing to worry. You can find them right here. So we go in the settings and then we have models builder and hull check. Also in Umbraco 8, the packages have been added in the out of the box se sections. The entire flow of building and testing packages has been made more fluent and consistent. Umbraco 8 comes with three built-in features that I would love to show you. The first one is called Variants. Now we can work with language variations, plus we can allow variations on a document type. This workflow pretty much removes the need for multiple nodes when creating multilingual sites, because you can easily add and update content variations based on the language you need. Let's have a look. Also in this video, I want to create all of the settings required for Variants. If you want to find more information regar regarding this, there is a link in the description. On the content section, 
have a node called homepage that has a couple of properties. If we go on the right side of the name, we have a small arrow that gives the option to choose the language that we want. Okay, now we are back. And as I mentioned earlier, if you want to hear more, about what's new in, uh, in 8, uh, you can go to our YouTube channel on Bravo TV and see uh, these three great videos that, uh, that uh, Gabriel produced. Uh, you need a mic like this. In the meantime, uh, and right before launch, uh, I've uh, now got uh, two new guests, uh, Sophie and, uh, and Jesper. And uh, the reason I invited you is we've heard about lots of launches today. We heard about uh, Umbrago 8, uh, new identity, new website, a uh, whole new cloud and deploy. But contrary to other releases we've been making, <laughs> you have been busy with uh, something awesome. Could you tell a little bit about it? Yes, uh, we've been very busy writing a documentation um, for Umbraco 8, getting that updated. Uh, we've been focusing on the, the getting started part of the documentation, so people know how to get started with Umbraco 8. Yeah, uh, we haven't, of course, updated everything yet. Um, we have uh, looked at what would a, a new user probably focus on, and then we also uh, started by looking at some analytics, what are our most visited pages in the documentation, and then we, we tried to focus on those ones. Um, and if you go to the Umbargo 8 landing page on umbargo.com, then you can uh, find a link to an overview of all the documentation that's currently out there in R. Um, and then, of course, if there's anything uh, that a new user would feel uh, is missing, then just let us know. Um, tweet about it or write to embargo support or make something on our and, and we'll probably find it. Uh, super cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, what about uh, the other content like Umbrago TV? Yeah, What's we've also, uh, Gabriel has already made, uh, like you've already shown in the stream, a few videos. And we're also launching one today that he made uh, last week about how to get started uh, with Umbraco 8. So installing Umbraco 8 and getting into the back office and start working with it. That'll be released here at the launch. Super nice. Mm. <laughs> so uh, so I actually, uh, I, uh, as I also uh, mentioned earlier in this, uh, <laughs> this live stream, as I, as I said uh, previously, I'm uh, making sure that things go wrong here so they don't go wrong uh, the rest of the day. Uh, <laughs> Um, and I was working on an eight site, and I there was something I couldn't figure out. Uh, and then I actually went to the uh, documentation, and you know, there's you say it's only getting started thing. It sounds like it's very little, but it's very thorough. A lot of the uh, including how to work with uh, with this uh, new con concept of uh, extending eight, but but even just uh, you know understanding the querying, is, especially for multilingual sites. Mm. Yeah. You've been doing a lot of work there. Uh, we actually did a full update of uh, the tutorial on how to create a basic site from scratch that also includes um, multilingual with uh, variants in the air. So that's, uh, that's definitely worth a, a watch. Yeah, and we've also had uh, some of the developers document the new things they've yeah. made in Umbraco 8 and that's helped a lot because we don't know everything that's changed in V8 so it's helped a lot having some help from those guys as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, sweet. Yeah, it's very, very nice. So I've uh, I've also been asking uh, some of the other people's this, and now we're two minutes before <laughs> launch, so a, a relatively uh, fast answer. Um, I think it's out. Oh, okay. Um, uh, then uh, okay. Um, uh, what is uh, your favorite uh, feature of eight that's not one of the usual suspects? Um, I, I would say the new log viewer. Uh, Warren did some great work on, on changing to Surrey log and it's really awesome to work with. Cool. Yeah, and she, you, Sophie? Was, yeah, that was uh, the one. <laughs> that's also one of mine. <laughs> yeah, I think that's really cool. You can search and get a good overview. Okay. Um, uh, anyway, um, let's, uh, let's go join the other ones yes. uh, for the launch. Uh, so, uh, yep. Uh, okay. Head to the main room, and then we're gonna push the big, uh, big uh, button.
that finished the live stream. Thank you for watching.